Alcohol Tipping Point is brought to you in partnership with Speak Studios and Speak Boise. Speak Boise is a community-driven studio space where voices from all walks of life can speak and be heard. You can find them on Instagram and Facebook at Speak Studios, Speak Boise, and at their website, speakstudios.com. Speak Studios, Speak and be heard. This podcast is also brought to you by Instant Imprints. Promote better with Instant Imprints. Instant Imprints are Boise's visual communications experts and your place for everything you need to promote your business, club, school, or group. As a locally owned business, Instant Imprints specializes in making your organization more visible with custom branded apparel, embroidery, promotional items, print services, and wide format printing for signs, as well as banners and vehicle graphics. Want better ways to get noticed? Visit Instant Imprints at instantimprints.com slash Boise or call 208-IMPRINT. That's 208-467-7468. Welcome back to the Alcohol Tipping Point. I am your host, Debbie Maisner, and today, all the way from Ireland, we have the author, Kate Gunn. Welcome, Kate. Thanks so much, Debbie. Thanks for having me on. Um, and Kate is the author of The Accidental Soberista, Discover the Unexpected Bliss of an Alcohol-Free Life, and I was delighted. Well, I'm I'm a huge Quitlet fan and a huge um, just reader in general. So I kind of like fangirl out whenever I get um, books or or am able to like speak to an author. Um, so I was super excited when you reached out and sent me your book. Um, and I just thought it was so refreshing. Um, and fantastic um, to hear about someone getting sober, but not because they necessarily had a problem with drinking, just because it made their lives so much better. Yeah, I suppose, and um, thank you for your lovely words there, but uh, I suppose that is the difference between this book and, and a lot of the others, um, because that phrase, you don't have to be an alcoholic to give up alcohol, uh, really is one that kind of stuck with me um, and that is my story so yeah I guess I was like just a you know a normal social drinker and um, so it was never about hitting rock bottom and having to give up it was more of a lifestyle choice. Yeah so tell me what what was your experience with alcohol? Um, so I'm Irish mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, it's ingrained in us from you know birth um, and everyone just drinks like it's just a normal part of life so like my parents would have drunk all of our family occasions growing up there would have been drink around um, in my teens and 20s I would have gone to the pub at the weekends um, with friends you know that's how we socialized that's that's you know all we did to socialize for to a large extent uh, and everything revolves around drink in Ireland you know it was like births christenings, deaths, weddings, like everything uh, revolves around alcohol. So it's very hard to step away from that. Um, and it's hard to know that you're actually in that because it's just part of normal life. Yeah, uh, it, it's so cultural where you're growing mm -hmm. up and, you know, if and it seems so normal, like you said. It seems so normal, yeah. And it doesn't like, so, you know, whereas... I've heard people discuss it like the drinking in Ireland and England um, can be different to what it's like in the States. And if you took somebody who was a normal drinker in Ireland and put them in the States, they might be considered an alcoholic. Uh, but over here, it's, 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 you know, there's a lot of drinking to excess and nobody bats an eyelid really. Like it's just, you know, the way it is. And we laugh about it the next day and then carry on with our normal week's work or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of people who um, have a love-hate relationship, I think, with with alcohol here. Mm -hmm. And so then, how did you decide to change your relationship with alcohol? Um, yeah, well, that's where the accidental part comes in. 
Um, so I didn't feel like I had a problem. I didn't um, dislike alcohol. I did get bad hangovers, but um, I I enjoyed the social aspect of it and I enjoyed drinking. So it was never something that I was like, oh, I have to give this up. Um, so I kind of accidentally fell into it in uh, that my partner um, had been having reflux issues with his stomach. And uh, the doctor said, you know, alcohol might be aggravating it. Why don't you just take a break for 30 days and uh, see if it helps? Um, and he came back to tell me this. And I honestly thought 30 days, that is so long. Like, <laughs> how are we going to do this? Um, but I thought like if he was going off it for 30 days, that I would kind of join them in solidarity for that month. And then, you know, that would be it. And we'd go back to our normal ways straight afterwards. Um, but it didn't quite happen like that because during those 30 days, um, we decided to kind of tackle it in a, in a, you know, the opposite of, of dry January and the deprivation that that brings. We decided to tackle it as in, okay, what can we gain from this month and, and what do we do with it? Um, so, you know, it, it was, it was a different mindset that we went into it with. Um, and when it came to the end of those 30 days, we thought like, oh, this is actually quite good. Let's do another 30. And it really just rolled on like that. So it was, uh, nobody was more surprised than I was. <laughs> and how long ago was that? Uh, that was five years ago. That's great. And so mm -hmm. what, I mean, one of the things I really enjoyed about your book was just that, that joy that you were experiencing just all the benefits of being alcohol free. Can you share some of those for our listeners? Yeah, it was like, it was a real surprise to me. I think again, like with that open mindset. Um, so the obvious, you know, no hangovers, I had kind of expected that. Um, but very early on, I saw like lots of benefits that I hadn't expected. Um, I had so much more energy um, and uh, increased productivity in work. Like my mind was like really clear and I felt like just on it all the time. Um, and uh, I felt like I had more time. There was like so much more time without hangovers and without like drinking. Um, that was a, a definitely an unexpected benefit that I just like had so much more time in my day and so much more time to accomplish things that I had always wanted to accomplish um and then yeah other surprising things like you know confidence so I thought it would knock my confidence not having that like crutch in social situations um but after a little while so the the social situations were uncomfortable at the start but then once I had kind of learned to be myself in those social situations that actually increased my confidence. And, you know, it, it's that kind of quiet inner confidence that, that you gain from knowing that you can just be you in those situations. Um, and just like everything, you know, parenting, everything was just easier and uh, happier, I think. And it was, it was, it surprised me. Yeah. And so you, you just kept going, like, why go back? Yeah, and that was exactly it. It was like, why would I go back? Like, look at all these things. Like, like, look how good my life is. Why would I go back? Uh, and I think, you, like, you know, we would have, um, and my partner stayed off it as well, and we would have kind of gone back to that question uh, over the first couple of years. Like, you know, are we going to keep going? Will we go back? Uh, and every time, that's what it came down to. Like, why, why would we? And then how did you decide to write this book? Um, I suppose that was a bit of an accident as well, uh, in that I had, um, I'd written a, a, a book a couple of years previous to that um, about having an amicable divorce. Um, so myself and my uh, ex-husband kind of wrote it together. Um, and that was my first book and like I'd always wanted to publish a book and you know I felt like I had done that one thing that I had always wanted to do in my life and I kind of then put it to bed uh, and I did a bit of freelance writing on the side and wrote for like some Irish uh, newspapers um, and then a publishing company actually approached me about doing a book on this and you know I was I was honored to be asked, but at the same time, I was thinking, I don't know if I have enough to write about, like a whole book about it. I don't know if I've got enough in me. 
Um, so it was only when like she kind of said, oh, you, you do and, and we'll help you. Uh, and when I started writing that, I kind of realized, oh, well, there's loads to unravel here. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of got stuck in uh, over the summer of lockdown. And what what's the response been? You, you know, you mentioned Ireland is a big drinking culture. So what's mm-hmm. the response been like from your family and friends and, and just um, being an Irish writer who releases this book? Um. Yeah, it's interesting. I think like it's it's changing. I think we're on the cusp of, of a big change and you can see that, um, you know, in the next generation, you can see it in all of the, um, you know, the, the non-alcoholic drinks that are coming into the market uh, and how quickly that is growing. So, um, you know, that, that sense of uh, when I was growing up, it was like if somebody was a non-drinker, you would not go near them. Like <laughs> you did not want to be stuck beside them in the pub. Um, but I think that is changing and people are, are a lot more accepting of it. Um, so there is still, there is, I mean, there is still a lot of people who are very defensive about their drinking and anything that, that challenges that status quo, uh, you know, they're, they're very defensive and they don't like it. Um, but at the same time, there's, there's more people who are, are beginning to open up to it and seeing the benefits that, it, you know, it can be a, a good thing. Yeah, it totally uh, is. Um it, and I think that it's this cultural shift, probably not just in Ireland, because it's it's definitely been around here, too, in mm-hmm. the States and um, internationally. I, I love the quote in your book where you, you know, going from this drinking culture um, and then going into this like alcohol free culture, you said it's like a weird process of leaving one cult and joining a new one. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. And like it, it initially, when you start to realize all the benefits and, you know, the, the, the lies you've been sold about it, um, like you're evangelical about it and you want everybody to know. And I kind of had to hold myself back, I guess, <laughs> from like being too over vivacious about the whole thing. Uh, so if people would ask me about it, I'd tell them, but like, you know, you can't, you can't just keep going up to people and telling them how good it is. Um, so yeah, I've had to, had to hold myself back in that regard. Well, I think that's one of the things that I like about your book and your experience with alcohol, because you, you know, had, didn't want to give up alcohol. You, you wrote about how in, you did a dry January and even wrote an article about how much you hated it. <laughs> Yeah, I did. Uh, and I also said to other people, you know, oh, my God, don't do that. Like, you know, I was warning people away from doing the dry January. And maybe that was, you know, maybe it was the, the wrong time for me. Okay. Um, but I think a lot of it had to do with that whole mindset that, that I talked about, that, you know, I was going into that going like, oh, my God, a whole month without drink. It's going to be so boring. And, you know, what am I going to do with myself every weekend? Uh, and that was how I went into it. Whereas, you know, if I if I had switched the mindset to, to being, OK, what am I going to get out of this month? Uh, it would have been different, I think. Yeah, it's not what you you're giving up. It's what you're gaining. Exactly. Um, well, what would you say are as you were going through the process, you mentioned that you did read some Quitlet books, um, being mm-hmm. a writer, I'm guessing you're also a big reader. What are some of your favorite quit look books? Um, so yeah, I think the 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 whole surrounding yourself, uh, especially in those early days, and I still dip in and out of them now, even now, like five years later. Um, but I think it's really helpful to read those books or listen to those podcasts or you know follow those people on Instagram because it just it, it just helps um, kind of keep you on track. Um, so the first one that I think made a big difference to me um, was The Unexpected Joy of Being Sober by Catherine Gray. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a real like, um, you know, all the joys of it um, and very much like a, you know, one person's story. But her, like she was she was further down the, the alcohol road than I was. So it didn't, you know, some of it didn't, didn't um, really stick with me. Um, another one was The Sober Diaries um, by Claire Pooley, uh, uh, an English, another English author. 
Um, and again, you know, very just kind of down to earth telling one person's story about it. Um, and uh, they were both great storytellers and I really enjoyed that. Uh, and then, of course, uh, this Naked Mind, which, you know, is like the Bible <laughs> at this stage. Um, so, you know, that's that's such an in-depth and, and clever look at, at it all. Yeah, the Naked Mind. So, yeah, I think they would, be my, they would be my top three, I think. Yeah, I love those all too. Um, and this Naked Mind by Annie Grace. Yeah, that was a real paradigm shift in how we view mm. alcohol because mm. we used to view it as the person has the problem and not yeah. as like, well, maybe it, this poison that we're putting into our bodies is the problem. <laughs> yeah, and like that that whole, that that wake up to that is immense you know and and a lot of people don't get that wake up at all yeah i was writing down um one of your quotes it, from the book where you were um you and your partner would sometimes get together and just say isn't it mad that we don't feel comfortable with friends without a drink isn't it mad that we actually poison our bodies until we're physically sick isn't it mad that we spend 60 years of our lives drinking? Isn't it mad that people get so defensive about alcohol? Isn't it mad that people don't know that drinking causes cancer? Isn't it mad the amount of money we all spend on alcohol? Isn't it mad that alcohol is the only drug that people don't congratulate you for giving up? Isn't it mad that giving up drink is considered such an extraordinary thing to do? Yeah, isn't it mad? <laughs> isn't it? Like, it is, but like that was the, the, the great thing about doing this together, you know, myself and, and my partner Aeon, um, was that we would have conversations like that just going, oh my God, like, you know, guess what such and such said to me today and like, isn't this crazy? Uh, and as you have those wake up calls, you've got somebody to kind of bounce it off. Um, and I've had a couple of friends who have gone through the same process and you know I'll get texts from them just going like oh my god like all of the birthday cards are about drinking or whatever like you know <laughs> it'll be some little nugget of something that they'll just be like oh who can I tell <laughs> and they'll text me and um, so it's lovely to have like a, a kind of you know a partner or a buddy or someone you're doing this with or a community or whatever it is because there's so many of those instances where you're just like wow this is like crazy mm hmm well, what would you say are your top tips for anyone looking to change their relationship with alcohol? Um, yeah, well, I guess, you know, I would preface it by saying, you know, from, from my perspective, and um, it's like, you know, a, a, a social, normal drinker perspective, mm -hmm. um, not an alcoholic perspective. And I think, you know, some people will need more help than others. Um and also the timing, you know, maybe the timing was just right for me because I didn't find it extraordinarily hard. You know, it was it was it was difficult at times. And, uh, you know, the first few weeks were probably the hardest. Um, but I didn't find the whole post. I, I, I found it a really good experience, not a not a really hard experience. Um, and looking back, I think, you know, as I say, that the, the mindset had a, a huge uh, made a huge difference on that. Um, also the non-alcoholic drinks that you can get now, you know, when I, even five years ago when we started, there was like one or two drinks you could choose from. Uh, and now there is like, you know, every brewery has their own beer and um, there's so many spirits and, and, you know, really great like botanicals and things like that coming out now. And um, so, you know, stuck up on them, try them out. It's like there's, there's some great drinks out there. Um, and the other thing would be, uh, we very early, um, in the process signed up to, um, like a, a physical event. So we did, um, a 10 K run in the dark. Um, but Ooh. just having something, some physical, um, uh, challenge to, to look forward to, um, it just takes the focus on, off things. So, you know, you're not looking at that Friday night beer, you're thinking about that Saturday morning run or whatever it is, you know, it, 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 it helps to, to steer your focus away from, from what you're missing out on. Uh, and plus, you know, exercise just helps everything. Well, that's a good segue because you write a lot about swimming in the sea. And mm. to me, that sounds kind of crazy. 
<laughs> but <laughs> tell me about, because is it the sea or the ocean where you're at? Uh, it's the Irish Sea. So uh-huh. um, it's very cold <laughs> all the time. Um, but yeah, so I, 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 I go swimming every day. Um, so winter, summer, whatever. Um, and uh, it's always cold, <laughs> even colder in the winter. Um, but I love it. It's like it's almost like a, a new addiction. You know, it, it, it clears the mind. It, um, it's community based. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've done kind of different challenges from, you know, sometimes I'm just like dipping, dipping myself in the water just to, to get that cold shock therapy. Um, but at the moment I'm training for a, a two kilometer, um, charity event. Um, so yeah, there's a group of, of women and we all train together. Um, and yeah, do, do some long swims along the, uh, Irish coast. Wow. Do you wear a wetsuit? Um, for the long ones, I do, uh, but for the yeah shorter ones, so I would do like you know I, I would do maybe five hundred meters without, but anything from like a kilometer upwards, I would wear a wetsuit. That's impressive. Is it um, is it unusual? Um, it, it, there's been a huge surge in uh, like year round sea swimming. Uh Um, and especially, yeah, in, in Ireland and where we are on the coast, um, it's like, and especially through lockdown, I think people were just, you know, looking after their mental health and a lot of people discovered that it it, it really helps. Um, so there's been a, a, a massive surge in, um, sweet sea swimmers. Yeah. It's great to see. Yeah, that's so cool. That's so unique. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time. I mean, I'm inland. Mm -hmm. We have lakes and rivers. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but yeah, impressive. I love that. Um, what, what are your plans for the future? Um, (laughs) I am just getting by at the moment. So I have, um, three kids, uh, they're all teens. Um, and I work for a, um, like a digital media agency, um, so that keeps me busy. And then I do a little bit of, uh, writing on the side. Um, so yeah, life is, is, is busy. Um, so I don't know, I'm not a very good, <laughs> not a very good planner. I just kind of see what, what comes up next. Um, so, you know, I'd lo- I know I'd love to, to write a novel. Um, and I have tried, uh, but funnily enough, like I find that the novel writing really hard, whereas, um, you know, the two books have kind of been, um, about myself, the memoir based, uh, and I had started my writing as a blogger, which was very much about kind of myself as well. So I think that's just kind of how I naturally developed as a writer. So, um, yeah, kudos to anybody who writes novels. It is really hard. <laughs> yeah. What, what's harder about it? Um, I guess like when you're, you're telling stories about your own life, the stories are already there. You're just mm. writing them. Uh, whereas for a novel, like it all has to fit together and you create the characters. And um, yeah, there's a, I think, well, from my point of view, there's a lot more to it. Yeah, that's interesting. I feel mm-hmm. like, what would you write a novel about? You said you started. I'm just curious because I think you're yeah. a lovely <laughs> writer. I have, um, oh my God, I have a, like a, a first draft that has probably been redrafted five times, um, but I can't quite get it to where I want it to be but um uh it's about a uh woman who has narcolepsy um and when she falls asleep she kind of enters a different world and that's what it's about oh that's (laughs) very creative that sounds interesting yeah maybe I just need somebody else to write it (laughs) there you go get like a ghost writer (laughs) yeah there you go Well, anything else you want to share for our listeners about um, living this alcohol-free life? Um, no, not really. Like, I, I love just, um, I love talking about it with people who are kind of in the know uh, because you just get it. Like, <laughs> whereas when you're trying to explain it to people outside of that, um, it seems like such a foreign idea. Um, and, you know, I was listening to your podcast just about like the brain and mm-hmm. the, the brain being the bullet. <laughs> I yeah. absolutely love it. I think it's like it's so interesting. I'd love to just take all of that knowledge and be able to like 
talk to people. So I'm good at like writing it out. Uh, but I'd love to just take like little pieces like that and be able to just talk to people when they ask you about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of like there's a lot of stuff to unpack. I think in the in the alcohol free world, there really is. Mm-hmm. But what I like about your book is I feel like you're you are someone that you're trying to talk to. Like when you, like, I, I can't explain it to some of my close friends or like my sister or someone, you know, that doesn't have a problem with alcohol, but like where Mm -hmm. you're, where you're saying like, you just want to shake them like, but couldn't your life be better without it? And it's like you, you're someone that someone shook and you listened and now you're living it. Yeah, and I, I feel really lucky, like, you know, it's like winning the life lottery that you you got to discover this. Um, and that, like, that whole thing about, you know, shaking the people you love and just, like, going, oh, my God, like, just you need to know this. Um, like, I, that's doubly true with your kids. But mm. you can't, you know, you can't, they've got to they've got to make their own way and they've got to make their own decisions. Um, so it's it's difficult to watch them, you know, about to enter that world uh, and to know there's only so much that you can do about it, really. Um, But I do feel that, you know, even giving them the knowledge that there is a different path, whereas, you know, when I was growing up, that was, that was, you know, all all the adults that I knew drank. Um, So even showing them that you're like, you know, there's there's an alternative option here. uh, I think that is worthwhile. Such a good point to bring in, you know, just being that model for your children to see that you're living a life without alcohol. You don't need to turn to it every time you're you're, you have a bad day or or you're celebrating or, you know, like you don't have to automatically turn to it. Yeah, that's I think that's a huge life lesson. And I also think that, like, you know, we start very early. So, you know, when when we're 16 or whatever Mm -hmm. it is um, and you know, we're, we're learning who we are at that age. Um, and I was very introverted growing up. So, you know, I never got to be that person without the, the drink making me into somebody different. Mm. So, you know, I thought I had to be extroverted because they were valued more uh, and the drink made me into that person that I wanted to be. And I think that's true of, of so many young people. And that's why you know, those, those habits start so early and then you just don't know any alternative route. That, that's just, you know, who you are when you go out uh, and you don't know that other person and you have to, to like, that's what I had to do was to, to relearn how to be me in those social situations. Um, and that's probably the most uncomfortable part of it all. Yeah. So true. Just finding out who you really are and what you enjoy mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and being like, Maybe I don't enjoy large crowds of people. <laughs> yes, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't have to. Yeah, that's great. Um, well, where can someone find you and find your book? Um, so my book is um, The Accidental Soberista, uh, Kate Gunn, and it is on Amazon and everywhere else. Um, and I have a blog, which is very unloved. <laughs> uh, I haven't been, been back to it for a while now. Life took over, but it's called Kate Takes Five. And I am Kate Takes Five on Instagram, Twitter, and everywhere else. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking your time to come on the podcast, call oh, in with you. our time change in Ireland. I need to, I need to try out. I'm going to put that on my bucket list to do <laughs> sea or ocean swimming. I've done the lake. I've done okay, the river. Yeah. Um, You're getting closer. But a cold ocean. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing like this. Oh, great. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Um, oh, it was thank you lovely. So much, it was so lovely to speak to you. Really lovely. You too. Take care. All right. Good luck and listen look forward to uh, listening to all your episodes. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
Hey everyone, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Alcohol Tipping Point. I'm always here for you guys, so please feel free to reach out and talk to me on Instagram at Alcohol Tipping Point and check out my website, alcoholtippingpoint.com. Again, I hope you can use these tips we talked about for the rest of your week. And until then, see you next time. Thank you.